So I'm talking to Dr. Thomas King, uh, Chief Information Officer from DKIX in Frankfurt, and we're talking about DDoS. And so Thomas, could you start by telling us a little bit about the different types of DDoS attacks? So um, if you look at the network stack, though, how networks um, and applications are delivered nowadays, we have mainly three different areas. We have the physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. so you can think about cables, we have uh, the active equipment, which makes sure that um, packets are routed to, uh, within the internet, so we have routers more or less. Mm -hmm. And then we have servers where the application is running. That's um, the, the highest level of the stack. And all these uh, three parts can be um, attacked by different DDoS attacks on different DDoS technologies. Um, and uh, yeah, they can be mitigated in different ways, of course, because they're different um, attack patterns. Okay. Which can be there. Okay. So, what are the different uh, mitigation technologies so, um, or techniques? For instance, um, for the um, internet infrastructure, so where we have the physical infrastructure mainly, um, you can use black holing uh, um, mm -hmm. technology, also provided by DKIX and other as well. ISPs provide that as well. Which is, um, you know, if you have a, a cable, it's a it's a pipe more or less, and if you uh, if the volume of data is a lot larger than the, what the pipe is um, capable of handling, then uh, data is dropped at the beginning of the pipe. Okay. And um, so if you, if you use black hole, you exactly make sure that you drop the traffic that's DDoS traffic and um, um, in order to make sure that the legitimate traffic can get through the pipe. Um, so you separate black hole traffic from legitimate traffic and um, let the legitimate traffic go through. You, it's not a 100% um, solution in terms of um, of making sure that only the DDoS attack traffic is sorted out. Okay. But um, but it's good enough to make sure that the pipe um, can be used for internet uh, traffic. So what are other possibilities for mitigation? Um, other possibilities, for instance, on the application side. Um, this is what uh, companies like Link11 or uh, Polaxis provide, are what we call washing machines for internet traffic. So they really separate each request on an application level. They understand what the, what the intent of a request for an application is and uh, sort out the, the DDoS attack um, requests and um, let through the legitimate uh, at, um, requests. Okay. Um, they can do it in a more, in a, in a, in a way better um, level than compared to black holing and uh, this is why it's uh, it's mo way more complex in doing it so it's uh, costs a lot more of doing it and uh, in the end it's it's a better thing because black holing more or less is uh, binary it uh, switches off the communication to to a certain destination whereas the washing machine really um, separates the bad traffic from the good traffic okay so you just mentioned the cost um, what does it cost to mitigate a DDoS attack? It really depends on the size and, um, and the DDoS um, attack technology that is used. Um, so black holing, for instance, is more or less um, free of charge for okay. uh, ISPs, so ISPs don't charge for that. IXPs usually don't charge for that. So it's um, in, in terms of using this technology, it's um, free of charge. Of course, you have to have the administrators and the, the people who understand what's going on um, on the on the DDoS attack and how this can be mitigated, so you have to pay them um, to do their work. But uh, for the technology, you don't have to pay uh, for that. On the if you use these washing machines, mm -hmm. um, it's a completely different story because um, you have to have also the administrators who know which um, which patterns um, can be can be used to the, um, to select the bad traffic and sort it out. And you have to have the infrastructure who is uh, able to handle this kind of request. So it's uh, yeah, it's uh, way, way more expensive than black hole. Okay. When we're talking about DDoS, so what first comes to mind is the the influence it has on traffic. What other kinds of collateral damage are there involved in a DDoS attack? So lately, what we have seen in the news. Uh, where what, what we call volume um, attacks, so meaning that there's a, l a lot of internet traffic involved in the attack, um, but um, there are other kinds of attacks um, also 
around which uh, look more on the resources of a, of a certain device, for instance. If you look at a router, you can easily um, overwhelm this machine, or the same is true with the server, if you, um, if you, um, if you send out certain requests, making sure that, uh, for instance, the CPU um, has to do some really complex compu uh, mm -hmm. computations, mm -hmm. so that it's used for, for some time. And so the, the mas machine is overwhelmed, not by Intel traffic volume, mm -hmm. but by the kind of requests you send to that machine, for instance, the router or server. And what about physical damage? Is that possible or is that unlikely? Um, physical damage is also possible. Usually that's not a, um, a distributed denial of service. Okay. Because what can happen is, for instance, um, if you have a, a machine that is overwhelmed by the uh, by the kind of uh, requests it gets, the CPU can overheat if it's not well designed. Okay. So there can could be um, physical damage um, as well, but usually the systems are designed in such a way that they can withstand um, this kind of DDoS attacks in terms of physical um, um, physical um, uh, healthy. Yeah, so they will not break on a physical level. Um, but you can think about um, you know. Um, distributed denial of service in terms of if, if there's a terrorist uh, group who um, sets off bombs at different data centers, that could also be a distributed denial of service. Okay, uh, on, a, on a quite different level. On a quite different level, definitely. Okay, so thinking about other impacts of a, a DDoS attack, um, the attack may be directed at one small area of the internet, what is the impact overall on the global traffic flows, for example? So um, usually a DDoS attack is, um, is destined to a certain destination. Um, what sometimes happens is that you have collateral damage, so meaning that, for instance, you have one customer that is um, the victim of the DDoS attack, mm -hmm. but in the same, um, in the same data center um, there are other customers as well, and the router that serves this data center um, gets hit by the DDoS attacks and shuts down because um, of, let's say, uh, the DP CPU is overheated. Okay. Okay. Um, then you have collateral damage on the other customers as well. That can happen. This mm -hmm. happens sometimes. Um, luckily, the internet was designed to, um, to withstand uh, atomic wars, in meaning that if there is an is a area which is hit by an atomic bomb okay. um, and the infrastructure is ripped off um, the Earth, then other parts of the network should withstand this kind of outage and uh, make sure that the communication is still feasible. And uh, this um, principle that was one of the, the principles designing the internet okay. helps us uh, withstanding um, large DDoS attacks on a, on, a, on a global scale, meaning that usually the, um, the impact of DDoS attack is, is on a regional level. It's on a, the impact is on a regional level, but it's still noticed on a global level? It could happen like the Dune attack. Uh, we have seen that if you do not properly design your um, systems, it can happen that if there is a single point of failure okay. uh, that it scales to a more global level. Um, yeah, that could happen, but um, actually there are techniques to circumvent this uh, kind of attack. Okay. What do you consider to be the worst case scenario from a DDoS attack? Yeah, the worst case scenario that could um, result from a large DDoS attack is the shutdown or the breakdown of the internet as we know it uh, today. It's, from my point of view, very unlikely because the systems um, are designed in such a way that this should never happen. But there are technical systems, if, um, if we oversaw something, um, it could happen. It's, um, as I said, very unlikely, but that's the worst case outcome of this kind of DDoS attacks that you should at least uh, keep in mind if you are um, if you're part of the discussion. <laughs> Can you give me any idea of the growth in frequency or the growth in volume of these attacks? I mean, uh, we've seen a couple which have been very publicly reported in the last year, perhaps the last two years. Um, from your perspective, how often are they coming and to what extent are they growing? So, um, uh, we, we did some research on the DDoS uh, attack frequency and at least what we see from our services we provide. 
we see that um, DDoS, um, or DDoS attacks are, um, are more frequent over time mm -hmm. um, because it's so easy to, to run DDoS attacks and you can have a, um, a really big impact with, with running a DDoS attack. But for whatever reason you do that. Um, so we, yeah, we see an increase in the frequency and also in the traffic volumes that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you just prefer the, the publicly available um, DDoS attacks. Um, we have seen a large increase in the volumes reported there. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we know from our services we run that, um, that we see a similar increase of traffic there as well. So yeah, uh, the frequency is increasing and also the, the traffic volumes involved are increasing. That's what we have s uh, been seeing for the last couple of years, to be honest. Um, my impression is that uh, in the last, I don't know, two years or so, um, the, um, as, the, um, as our um, community is moving more into an internet-enabled uh, community, we are consuming more uh, internet-enabled services every day. Um, uh, so if there's an, an impact in, on the infrastructure, this, um, this is more reported. Mm -hmm. uh, on the on the news level, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the the public uh, um, perceives it uh, um, on a more on a more frequent level. But um, we as as internet infrastructure operator, we have seen that for a couple of years already. How often do you see the uh, the uh, the DKIX black holing service being used, and and how great are the volumes there? Um, so we see that it's quite often used. Uh, we did a, a research on that um, mm -hmm. um, and it's publicly available what we have found out. So we see that, uh, for instance, the black holes, so that's our mitigation solution. Uh, we see that there are um, um, at every point of time about 1,200 active black holes used to find DDoS. Um, at any point in time? At any point in time. It's more or less stable, this number. We have wow. uh, looked into that um, during a time of, I think, three months it was. Okay. And uh, this number is more or less stable. This fluctuates a bit, but yeah, it's, um, it's around 2,000, uh, sorry, 1,200 uh, black holes active at every point in time. So yeah, it's, it's a huge number. And also the traffic volumes we see are, um, are, are increasing, as I said. Um, but we are not in the level of what, what was reported uh, publicly, so we are not seeing a terabit of traffic. That's okay. not what we see. We see traffics in, uh, in the gigabit level, so 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 gigabits. Um, we see um, DDoS attacks in this level. With the Dyne attack, did you actually notice, uh, did you feel an effect on the DKIX exchanges? Um, actually, we did look deeply into that, but from we, we had a, sh um, a brief discussion within our research and development team about that. We, uh, we, lo we looked on our crafts and we didn't see it exactly on, um, on, okay. on our crafts. And as I said, we didn't deep uh, dive into it, this question, but yeah, so we didn't see it. So just talking for a minute about one of DKIX's other services, you've just started offering a direct cloud service. And you're marketing it as DDoS proof. Right. How does that work? So it's actually pretty easy. What we do is we separate the internet traffic from the traffic um, that goes through the direct cloud product. So direct cloud is um, is a product that um, provides connection a connection between an enterprise and a cloud service provider mm -hmm. like um, Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. Um, and by separating um, this connection from the internet traffic, we can make sure if there's a DDoS attack going on in the internet, it does not hurt the um, direct cloud connection. So whatever is going on in the internet, it has no impact on the direct cloud connection. And this is why we, uh, we uh, marked it as DDoS proof. Okay. Thomas, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.